like to introduce you now to two of my favorite people on this planet. They're billed as Ryan Spearman and Kelly Wells, but they're also known as the Aching Hearts since 19... <laughs> did you... 2000. 2000. 1916, I believe. They, they keep it going around. So, welcome, please, the Aching Hearts, Ryan Spearman and Kelly Wells. <laughs> Miss Kelly Wells there on the vocals singing an old Rose Maddox number called the Hangover Blues and I'm sure a couple of you can relate to the subject matter there on a day like today. You have to figure out what it's about. There's a lot of subtext in there. Uh, but that was, uh, that was an old number that we, we love from an artist we love and now we're going to give you one uh, from an artist I love myself. This is an original number here called Promised Land. And uh, this is did on. Did you just say you love yourself? Yeah, I did. But who doesn't? I you hope, hope y'all love yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm the one that's supposed to love you, right? Beat you do the punch there. <laughs> this is one from an album of mine called Get Along Home, which is over there in the tent, I believe. And it's, it's an album that I did all on homemade and recycled instruments. Pretty interesting project. On that album, I think... Uh, when you play this song on that album, you're playing a homemade ukulele that was made out of a cigar box. Isn't that right? Yes, ma'am. He played it in the old time. He claw hammer style like he's going to do with this banjo. Sounded good. You can hardly tell that uh, it's something you made in your basement. Well, Ryan's played music for a long time, and I've played music for a much shorter amount of time. Um, and he's kind enough to let me play with him. So we're going to play one of his called Promised Land.
try to fix my living just like other people do. But they wouldn't give me half the wage that I felt due. All the wage that I felt due. Promised land. to sing murder ballads. It's one of his favorite things to do. And you know, in those old ballads, most of the time the woman gets killed. I'm not real sure why. Uh, it's always tales of like men getting cold feet. You know, they, they get engaged, the guy gets cold feet, and the next thing you know, he's dropping her in the river, he's digging her in a grave. And uh, it's kind of sad. And when, you, when it comes down to it, there just aren't that many where the, you know, where the woman gets to kill the man. This next song, I personally like because they both die. <laughs> if one of them is gonna die, it might as well be both of them. That's what I call an old timey Romeo and Juliet number.
We like to sing songs about heartache. That song definitely has some heartache in it. They did love each other, though. A lot of times we're singing about love gone wrong, and I guess that was kind of love gone wrong, but I think it's more a word to the parents. Let your children marry who they want. Is that the moral of that song? I guess so. I guess so. It's a 21st century moral, I reckon. Um, it could be uh, don't leave your silver daggers laying around where your kids can get to them. Well, there's another moral. When we first started playing music together, um, everyone asked us, kept asking us, like, write a love song, write a love song. I guess just because we're married, people think we love each other. Ha. And so we did. We wrote a love song. We wrote a love song. And we came up, we thought long and hard, and we came up with a really good title. It's called Love Song. That it is. Oh. I cry for you, you cry for me, you push, you turn in the shove. I curse your name, but I can't let you be. I guess we must be in love. You lie to me, I lie to you. From all counts, this is is called love song we call that the true love song it's about <laughs> true love uh, we're going to mix some instruments up here and give you some more of mix of originals and old timey stuff and all that thank you ernie for the great introduction and uh he was correct we do uh, have a lot to do with the folk school of st louis and uh we are indeed bringing dr ralph stanley to to st louis at the end of september and it's part of our festival our second annual St. Louis Folk and Roots Festival. So I know you all out there are predisposed to uh, 
like bluegrassy music festival, so I'm telling you now, uh, keep a lookout. You can go to folkandrootsfestival.com and uh, at least get on our mailing list, and we'll start telling you all the info. Got Dr. Ralph Stanley. We got the Hillbenders. We got a bunch of other great acts from all over the country coming out. It's going to be three days of fun and, and mayhem, fiddle contest, and a bunch of good acoustic music. <laughs> That was a Kitty Wells song. My name is Kelly Wells, and for a good part of my life, I was pretty sure that we were related. There's only three letters different, so it seemed like a natural to me. And my father and my grandfather led me to believe it as a child. They always listened to Kitty Wells, the old vinyl, and uh, I would ask about it, and they would just say, sure, you're definitely related to Kitty Wells. Well, when I got into high school and started doing some more looking around, I found out that's not even her real name. So. I don't know why they were telling me such tall tales, but I like to think we're connected. I'm gonna do a John Hartford number for you here. case it in steamboat whistle blade. Oh, Captain Way, I'm sorry, my hat is off to you. Been hanging out by the old cook stove at them steamboat whistle blade. Well, North 
called your phone, but it didn't get no one to answer. So I opened up the window and I smoked a little bit and I watched the cars go by. Gonna call you up and ask you, have you found out anything new? Are you hanging with the best you have and then steamboat whistles blue? I've been right here since nine o'clock and believe you me, it's true. Looking at the waterway churning on with the steamboat whistle blue. all square like a crossword puzzle on a landscape. Looks like electric shaver there where the courthouse used to be. All the grass is all synthetic and we don't know for sure about the food. The only thing we know for sure is when steamboat whistle blew. I'd sit and watch my TV if I thought I could trust the news. The only thing I trust these days is when steamboat whistle blew. seeing John Harford, but I believe you did <laughs> several times in St. Louis. I grew up in Memphis. I guess we didn't know much about John Hartford down there. I had to learn about him later. I'm awfully glad I did, though. It's a pleasure to be here. The main stage has just been, uh, it's been a lineup of our, our favorite musical friends today. We've uh, had a lot of fun seeing Betsy Ellis and Frank Lee and the Tillers and the Lodge Brothers right before us were from, are from St. Louis as well. So, uh, it's fun to have other St. Louisans here. I think there are more St. Louis bands as well. We're going to sing out one that we wrote on a random afternoon. We were at a festival down in Fayetteville, uh, the Fayetteville Roots Fest. And I think we just got inspired by all the songwriters that were there. Um, so we sat down in our room one afternoon, and Ryan said, he came up with a line, and he said, I'm going to come up with the first line, and then we'll just, you say whatever comes to, to, your, to mind for the next line, and we'll just, you know, we won't think about it too much, we'll just do it. So he did the first line, and then we kept going back and forth and back and forth from that, till we came up with this little song. I always tell people, if there's a line you especially like, it was probably mine. <laughs> It's called Crawling Back to You. It's a good old country love song number. It's an aching heart number.
Would you find it in your heart to pick up where we fell apart? If I promise to be true, can I come crawling back to you? In case you're wondering, I always see it as the man is crawling back. I don't, I don't know about you there, Ryan, but what's that? I'm pretty I sure. I was checking that my email. I didn't, really, I didn't you're not hear listening you. to me. I'm pretty sure that uh, the man's the one that's crawling back, right? That's exactly the way, the way I see that song, except for one minor detail. Really? Yeah, I think it's the woman. Yeah. I think you're crazy. So there's one right there. Well. I was telling y'all earlier about the tall tales I was told as a child, living, uh, growing up in the South. There's, um, well, let's just say I come from a long line of exaggerators, people who uh, like to tell a story and tell it well, like to embellish a little bit. And you know, I mean, they wouldn't go so far as to say you should lie, you just should make it sound good. So growing up, my mother always told me, if you need help from somebody or you need something, just tell your story. Tell them, you know, if, if you're moving and you need a special deal on a rental vehicle, just tell your story. Tell them why you need the deal, and then maybe they'll help you out. So I wrote a song that combines the ideas of telling your story if you need something, but also embellishing just for the fun of it. Yeah, I think in the South, there's when they say tell your story, there's this implicit meaning there which is tell your story in a hyper-exaggerated fashion. Because <laughs> my experience with folks from the South, especially Kelly's family, <laughs> is they, they don't think a, a story just unto itself is just a story. But a story that's been, shall we say, seasoned <laughs> and tweaked to perfection is just much more entertaining. You know, Truth be damned, it's really about the entertainment value. That's what we're all here for. Uh, so I think this is the first song that Kelly wrote all by her lonesome. We do a lot of songwriting together, but I think this is the first one, that, actually the first one that she's willing to share with you anyhow. And it goes a little something like this. Tell your story and tell it good. Just enough. 
your story. You just got to get it out there. Make sure you use your powers of embellishment when you do. Might help now. I think you know our story. We're from St. Louis. We're a husband and wife team here, and this is kind of a Kelly plays in the Lulus. Hopefully you've caught them already at this festival, but they'll be playing again tomorrow on the Hippie Hill stage. So will Kelly and I, I believe. Yes, we will. Uh, so please come back and see us again. Uh, I play a lot, play some solo stuff usually, and uh, this is our new project. We're, we're uh, putting our powers together like Wonder Twins and activating a new, a new folk duo. <laughs> got some, uh, I've got some CDs over on the tent. I think we played a couple couple songs from a couple of those CDs over there. So if you want to come over and grab one of those after the show, that'd be great. Or if you just want to say hello, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, when we get off stage, we'll grab our instruments and kind of head out there so you can say hello if you'd like. This is, this is one here uh, by one of my favorite bands of all time, a band called Cannon's Jug Stompers. They recorded in the late 20s and the early 30s. And they're out of Memphis, Tennessee. They were a jug band. And they cut a lot of sides back then for a variety of, of record makers. And uh, just were a really, really great band. Check them out if you haven't already heard of them. Cannons Jug Stompers get some wild music from the late 20s and early 30s. And you recognize some of their songs because a, uh, a lot of bigger bands later kind of covered their stuff, like The Grateful Dead and uh, I think maybe John Sebastian and a few others. So this one you might recognize. It's called the Big Railroad Blues. used to be in a band called High on the Hog back in the day. They were a band out of Colorado and they played a lot of old time music. Well, they played mostly old time music, I guess. And uh, 
When I first met Ryan, that was the first band I had heard playing that style of music outside of M Memphis and Mississippi where I was raised. They were a performing band doing it. And uh, this was years ago, but I was completely intrigued that people were playing this music and uh, spreading it around because it was songs I'd heard my grandmother sing. And um, I didn't really realize that other people were out there doing it. We're going to get Ryan to play the fiddle. That's what he played in High on the Hog. And uh, that's... That's all I knew he could play until High on the Hog, when they broke up, Ryan started doing some solo stuff. And I remember people, and even I asked him, so are you just going to sit and play the fiddle for two hours? And come to find out that uh, he played banjo and mandolin and guitar as well. I think we were even dating at that time, and I didn't really understand that you played other instruments but the fiddle. Molly, put the kettle on. Sorry, I tend to whoop every once in a while. I get a little excited sometimes when I fiddle. Um, but the way to get rid of that awkwardness that happens when I go whoop is that you just join in and start doing it yourself. And if that doesn't work for you, you just make some chicken noises or something, and we'll all be all right. But it's about that time in the day the rain's cleared up. We're all kind of getting ready to wake up, so it's time to make some noise, maybe shake around in your bones. So feel free to, to do that. This one here. It's going to be a slower number, though. Just say. It's another love song. This one here is a song. It's a song by Miss Catherine Irwin, who's in a band called Freakwater. Back in the early 90s, they kind of helped uh, pioneer the alt-country movement, uh, them and Uncle Tupelo. I've always loved this song, and I had the pleasure of seeing uh, Freakwater on their 20-year reunion tour this past uh, spring. And they played this song, and it re-inspired us.
can't remember where I put the blame. And in the morning when it's time to go home, I can't remember your name. Thank you, thank you so much, y'all. We are the Aiken Hearts. Listen, we come into this world naked and bare, and we travel through this world with trouble and care, and we die and go we don't know where, but we'll be all right there if we do all right here. Listen, in every heart there burns a flame for the love of glory and the dread of shame, but oh, how happy we all would be if we understood there is no safety but in doing good. <laughs>